Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this very special edition of Our Stories, uh, which, as you know, Charlotte's been doing for a lot of uh, uh, colleagues and suppliers. Um, this one's a very special one. As, as most of you know, um, Friday was, was uh, Friday, Charlotte, I think. Saturday. Was it? Saturday. Saturday was a very special day in the life of Maisie Darling. It, uh, um, the shop uh, became one year old. Um, so I asked Charlotte if I could uh, be a bit cheeky and uh, take over the airwaves and um, ask her a few questions about uh, uh, Charlotte and Maisie's story. So uh, good afternoon, Charlotte. Hello, Steve. Thank Hello. you. Well, I'm saying thank you for doing this, but it's, um, it feels very different when you're on this side of it. So welcome, <laughs> welcome to the torture you've been putting us all through. I know. I know. No, no, no. It's, it's not torture. It's been it's been absolutely lovely. So um, and, and uh, I, I know your story to a certain extent um, and, and I think it's a really charming story. So I thought it was it would be lovely that you know, other people found out exactly what you were uh, uh, what you were about and how you got to be where you are. So, uh, without further ado, tell us your story. Uh, tell us all about how you got to the stage where you decided you were going to open a, a shop. Where, where, start at the beginning. Where were you born? Okay, so um, I so as a child, I was born in York, um, and then moved to Leicester when I was four. I think I was four. Yeah, I'm sure I was. Um, and so I had always been a dancer as a child and um, loved doing that. However, I do remember myself, and it's a bit cliche, but I do remember whenever we used to go past a wedding dress shop, I always used to look in the window and admire the dresses. Um, I remember there used to be one in Burbage on the corner. Yeah um and i used to actually, I remember it yes yeah, yeah 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 i used to love the dresses in that shop um mm. but anyway i um finished school and decided to go on with the dance side of it um dance has kind of got a bit of a limited lifespan so i decided to go that way and what sort of dance were you doing at that stage what what what, what style of dance was it um so I have always done kind of what every little girl does. So ballet, tap, modern. I used to do acrobatics as well. So all of those kinds of things. Wow. Uh, but then decided I wanted to teach it. So I went to uni and did contemporary dance and choreography. Um, I, I did do textiles at school, though. So that still was always in the kind of background anyway. So anyway, did that taught for um, 15 years in a college and during that time I got engaged um, and we moved to Australia for a year and lived in Sydney and during my time in Australia the fashion um, was very different yeah. uh, it's like they're five years behind us over here. <laughs> I, I, I can uh, I can empathize with that having lived in South Africa so uh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but while I was in Australia, um, I created this massive scrapbook and I used to buy the English imported wedding magazine every week because they were still around then, wedding magazines, and I used to sit and cut out all the pictures and whatever. Um, so this, you, you were still engaged at this point? Yeah, so we got engaged before we went to Australia. Yeah. Then in Australia... Um, we were kind of maybe thinking about the wedding, but I was just looking at all the dresses and everything. Was, that's what I was going to ask. Was was this kind of the the, the kind of um, storyboard that most brides to be go through, or was this kind of something different? You felt the pull was coming, sort of bringing you towards more towards a career in the um, in that industry. I think, um, yeah, it reminded me how much I loved the dresses. Mm. Um, and everything for the bride so um the scrapbook was just full of beautiful dresses and I loved it I loved every week looking at the dresses that were in the um magazines yeah. and so um when we came back we actually planned and I got married and um about four years ago um I did try then to um open a shop but mm. um it is quite 
an expensive thing you have to put money up front because you have to buy all the dresses that are in the shop and it just wasn't the right time so you decided to leave it you decided to leave it until probably the toughest year in uh, yeah. uh in, in commercial history to yeah. uh, to actually venture into it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I parked it so I put it to bed parked it and then um it all just happened in a really snap decision I just woke mm -hmm. up and thought no I've got to do it now and it kind of went from there um and the minute I made that decision that was it I went full steam ahead and I think I finished I made the decision in I think it was like the September October time finished teaching in the December and opened the shop in the January. So it was very quick. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, and yeah. Had, you, had you seen the premises? Did you, I mean, we all know your shop is a beautiful little place, um, like an Aladdin's cave for brides, but uh, had you found the premises or did you have it in your mind or? No, no, nothing. So um, I looked around. So when I made the decision, I looked around. I considered being in the city centre, so in Leicester. But always in the back of my head, I wanted to be away from the town centre so that it was more of a destination. People travelled so that they could yeah. come. Um, and I came to school in Lutterworth. So remember so the high street and knew that it was there and all of those kinds of things. And yeah, I, there was two shops in Lutterworth that were free at the same time. And I just loved the split level of this so that the top part could be just for the bride that was trying yeah. dressing on. Uh, and so, yeah, that's that's why I chose this one. It always amazes me when I come to your shop, how, which uh, obviously I come down and photograph quite a lot of your dresses. So, uh, but it always amazes me just how much you get into that space because it's... Yeah. It's not a huge shop, but that makes it just so intimate in there. I think it's uh, um, it, it's just crammed full of goodies for uh, brides, for sure. Yeah, it, uh, it isn't that big, but actually it's big enough. I don't mm. think I'd want it to be – I don't think I'd ever want a massive shop where it no. felt impersonal. I like that it's – I was just about. I was just about to say that I think one of the beauties of the shop is the the, the um, uh, intimacy. Um, you just feel welcome there. Welcome there. I know you've got the sign on the door. Uh, you know, uh, I can't. I can't remember the exact words. What does it say? Is it welcome to all? It's a Disney quote, actually. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. That's it, yeah. And and it's so true. You walk through those doors and you just feel so welcome all the time. So uh, so well done in creating just the the perfect place for uh, for for a bride to come. So so tell us how I know who Maisie is. Tell everybody who Maisie is and and how you came to name the business. Um. So Maisie was my grandma. Yeah. Um. And the the main memories of her that i have is how glamorous she was um she always had lipstick on no no matter whether she was sat at home or going out always you never saw her without lipstick on you never saw her without a hair done um and she always had the most beautiful clothes and handbags and um I don't know why this sticks in my head, but she always used to carry her handbag over her arm and she'd toss her around with this handbag. Um, and and so I, I can't even explain to you why. It just, I just knew that the shop had to be named after her. Her name was Maisie Marling. Yeah. Um, and then when I was trying to think of a name of a shop, I didn't want anything that was traditionally bridal. Um, yeah. And so because my surname is Dilks, when I looked at it and I changed the letter, I just thought the word darling was so apt. Oh, um, and uh, I, I never realised that surname was Marling. So yeah. Marling, darling rhymes, of course. Yeah. As well. so, but uh, yeah, I, I, I have to agree with you. I mean, I've been, I was very privileged in a uh, uh, certain memory of your family. Hello, yeah. mum. <laughs> <laughs> um, um asked me to uh, work on a photograph for a, a surprise present for you so we we had this little scheme going as you know behind your back um yeah. uh and uh, i uh, your mum i went down your mum's house and picked up a photograph of your nan and granddad and uh, yeah. what a what a 
stunning couple they were. I mean, uh, um, I thought I was looking at film, uh, you know, film stills from the 40s or 50s. It was, uh, uh, it was amazing. So, yeah, what a glamorous woman and, and what, a, what a beautiful heritage to have in your shop. I think yeah. it's, uh, I think it's a lovely story. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, you, uh, so you knew, you, you did get to, you knew your nan. So um, she was around while you were, you were alive sort of thing. Yeah, she um, she was, I can't remember how old I was, but yeah, she was around um, for my early childhood. Um, she got and out. And that's, and that's the thing that sticks in your mind is that, that glamour. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she got Alzheimer's and she was a bit, um, she, she was a bit crazy and funny. I remember that. She was always making everybody laugh. And, oh, um, and even when she got, a lot older she was always glamorous always yeah, yeah. oh that's lovely yeah, yeah. well like uh, 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 it, the, the was it the apple doesn't fall far from the tree yeah. i guess so uh, oh. yeah so um no well done so um so uh, we've all we've already said you picked the, the strangest year possible uh, to uh, to start your business. A little bit there's a similarity there, I think, in my story. But uh, yeah, you, you know, 2020. I mean, wow, what a year! Obviously, we all know the bad stuff. What was the good stuff for you? I mean, obviously, opening your own business must have been way up there. But what else did you take away from 2020? Do you know what? I was talking to Gavin about this the other day and actually on reflection, everybody says how like what an awful year to um, open a wedding dress shop. But at the current climate now, if I hadn't have done it then, I probably would never have been able to do it yeah. Um, yeah. because of the situation that we're in now and nobody knows what it's going to be like after I just don't think so actually even though it was a shocker of a year I think it was meant to be because it wouldn't have happened if yeah and if I it think, didn't happen then I think we've said it before but, but if you can make it work yeah in 2020, then you know hopefully we can make it we can yeah. all make it work uh, you know when we come out of this awful awful thing so um, and, um even though so even though i've been in covid uh, i think i think something like over 30 brides have still found their dress here and that is like i'm so proud of that it's amazing who yeah. have been able to help that many people in this current climate it's um, yeah. it's really really lovely as special so uh, absolutely so do you ever get to do you ever get to the weddings of the brides that you've so you, you, you've told a dress to or so so far three of my brides have got married yeah. um i've never been to the actual ceremony um i would love to one day you know just be outside when they arrive at yeah. the church or wherever they're getting married i think yeah. that would be really lovely um but i've been to the reception of one of my brides that was so oh, lovely yeah that was re that was such an honor that she invited me um yeah, but because you're with that person for a long time during their wedding process you actually get to know them really really well yeah. um, and so you do form a friendship with them I, I I agree. When when you did this to me, when we did this interview, I think I said that uh, I, I I just am so honoured that people choose me to do yeah. the photography or for you to do their dress kind of thing, and um, you know you it's a wonderful thing, and and you do you get to know the couples um, very 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 well, and and that's yeah. the bit I enjoy about the job the most, I think. So yeah. So, oh, that's good. And so, twenty twenty one. What's <laughs> as much as you can forecast? What's twenty twenty one going to do for you? Oh, um, do you know what? I'm not going to make any predictions. I'm just going to go with the flow. Going to go with it. Go with the flow. I think um, people are still wanting to get married, and so therefore. I will be here with the dresses for when people choose that they want to get married. I think maybe it will be a different kind of wedding maybe for some people. Um, yeah. I think we've all changed our approach to things. I think the little yeah. things have become more important to us all. And um, yeah, I think 
nothing is taken for granted as much. So um, I think that that will maybe transpire through to weddings as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, so, let's just see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, I'm, I'm just looking forward to when we can actually start meeting again. And uh, ah. um, we, we had some we had some great plans um, just prior to uh, going into tier four, didn't we? And uh, <laughs> we we're going to do a world tour with your with your mannequin, and we were going to do all yeah. sorts. Of, we had some crazy ideas, some really great ideas. So fingers crossed that we can get out and do that soon and and promote our businesses and and get to meet more and more brides and grooms and whatever and uh uh yeah so let's hope the year's good to us all but um yeah, yeah so right i'm going here comes the inquisition um <laughs> the, the, the fun bit so um have, big question have you started the wordpress book yet that uh that jordan uh recommended to us um surprisingly no not yet no i've not got into i tried the first chapter but kind of lost the plot a bit so uh not further know. than i did then <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you read you said you you, you said you don't read that much or uh, I love bridal magazines? <laughs> yeah i love reading but i just never can find right. the time to do it um so yeah not much yeah yeah so i'm gonna ask what box set uh, I know the answer. I think most of your friends and colleagues that you've worked with know the answer, but go on. Favourite box set. Your favourite ever box set. Yeah, Grey's Anatomy. But Grey's actually, yes, Grey's Anatomy, because I live my life by it. But a close second is Brothers and Sisters, because oh, yeah. even though it's old now, I just love it. It's a, that, I, I, I'm with you on that. It's a great series. So yeah, so yeah, lovely. And um, because I knew the answer to that one, I've kind of put a couple of extra little things in here. Okay. But what's your favourite film of all time? Oh, um, I should have sent these to you beforehand, so you can. I know. Yeah. So I think it has to be Dirty Dancing, although I struggle to watch it now. Since T is no more, I find it really sad watching it. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I love it. Are you love are you a, are you a, an old Hollywood kind of uh, person? Are, are you um, uh, uh, some like it hot? Uh, uh, you know, uh, an American in Paris or those kind of uh, things? Yeah, no. Surprisingly, not that much. I, um, uh, I love Hello Dolly. Oh I yeah, I love that. Yeah, um, and I love the fashion in that. So yeah. Um, yeah. I know you're very influenced by um, uh, by Audrey Hepburn and, uh, oh. and and Marilyn Monroe. So I was, I thought maybe you you know you you had a little kind of Sunday afternoon film matinee or something uh, with yeah. all the fifties and stuff. Um, I definitely am influenced them in terms of fashion and style, and mm. but actually, I've never, I think I've only ever seen one Marilyn Monroe film. So maybe I need to get on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, song. Oh, Proud Mary, Tina Turner, every single day. I love Creedence Clearwater Revival as well, but <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's the uh, Tina Turner, isn't it? That's right. So yeah. And who's yeah. your favourite? Who's your favourite musical artist? I'm throwing up some goodness here. So because I'm totally in love with him. Michael Bublé, but yeah. because I'm in love with him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but his music? <laughs> I do love his music, though. Have you seen yeah. him live? Uh, yes, I've seen him live. I should have seen him live three times. I was supposed to go this year, but obviously, well, 2020, but obviously got cancelled, so I'm going yeah. this year. I actually, when I went on um, holiday to Las Vegas, I saw him there. He was amazing. Oh, wow. Okay. I've heard yeah. he's very, very good. Live. Oh, yeah. amazing. He interacts with the audience a lot, doesn't he? Yeah. So, which I love. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Good. And then one last one for you. Um, what's your favorite style of dance? I know you said you've you've taught and, and done tap and ballet and that kind of thing. Do you have one favorite style of dance that you love to do or dirty dancing or? <laughs> <laughs> that I like to dance or that, that I like that to You dance. like to dance, yeah. I think it has to be contemporary, what I, the style I studied at uni. 
Yeah. Um, so there's kind of no boundaries, and so I quite like that. And what was your first dance for your wedding? Um, it was Home by Michael Bublé. Michael Bublé. Love. Well, that, oh, well, there you go. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. End of, end of, end of that, end of, oh. end of the interrogation, except for oh, um, the one thing that you always ask us at the end of it is yeah. what one bit of advice anything doesn't have to be weddings what one bit of advice will you give to people out there okay so it's it's more of a quote that i live by rather than a piece of advice and it's um everything will be okay in the end and if it's not okay it's not the end i've said yes brilliant yeah yeah south africans have a saying it'll come right which is effectively yeah. the same thing yeah so yeah. well Let's hope that 2021 comes right for us all. Uh, oh, yeah. That it's, it's the end of the beginning, the beginning of the end, whatever. It's going to be a great year for us. Once we get out of this uh, this, this lockdown and, and the tier system and everything and everybody yeah. can get out and about again, it's going to be a great year. Maisie Darling is going to go from strength to strength because oh. your dedication and the way that you are with people, be it brides, be it, be it people that you work with, the suppliers, all, all the people I know that we deal with together, um, think the world of you, Charlotte. So um, oh. all strength to you. Happy birthday, Maisie, darling. Thank you. Thank you very and, much, Steve. Uh, thank you. Thank you for doing this with me. I, I hope oh. it wasn't too painful for you. It was slightly painful, actually. So I have a bit more um, compassion for the people that I do it to now. Keep doing it because it's a lovely, I, I think it's a lovely thing. So I just wanted to do it for your birthday. So, oh, thank you. So, Very kind of you. Okay. Now you're going to have to sign us out of this because I've got no yes. idea how to do yes. it. So. I'll sign us out. Thank okay. you so much. Oh, thank hello, you. Heather. Bye. Thank you. Heather's watching. Oh, lovely. Um, yeah, sorry. Anyway, goodbye, everyone. <laughs>